Welcome to the course Business Analytics and Text Mining Modeling using Python. So in last few lectures we have been focusing on the numerical Python package, numeric, uh, NumPy package in, in the Python environment. Uh, now before I start uh, you know a further discussion in NumPy, uh, I would like to uh, you know touch upon few aspects about uh, this Jupyter network interface. And uh, here for example uh, till now we have been using uh, scripts and you must have seen the outputs uh, you know from the previous run. So uh, you might have uh, figured out on your own how to get rid of these outputs. However, uh, for once I will also uh, you know demonstrate how to perform this. So you can see a number of uh, lines of code written there in 145, in 146, in 147 and uh, outputs also associated outputs also uh, you can see in this uh, you know in this script and what we can do is we can go to the uh, cell tab and you can see all output uh, at the end of uh, this uh, you know uh, cell tab uh, you know menu and you can see at the end you can see clear so in one go we would be able to clear all the output so we will have to run the whole script again if we happen to be using uh, some of the uh, you know uh, some of the uh, objects which have been defined at the early uh, part of the script. So let us let me clear this for once. So you can see I have just pressed clear and what will happen is that all the numbers in these uh, you know in this indexing i n and within the brackets uh, the uh, the numbering is gone and the output is also gone. So uh, this is just to in just in case you have not uh, figured out this aspect of Jupyter network then just in that case I wanted to uh, you know demonstrate this. Now uh, if we want to because uh, you know we have been uh, using we have been accessing some of the earlier defined objects uh, in this script. So we would prefer to run many uh, lines of code before we start our discussion on the next part. So that we can do we can again go to the cell tab and you can see run all and run all above. So in this case uh, suppose uh, you know we want to start from the uh, you know transpose method. So let us see if we want to start from this part. So you can see I have clicked at that particular line and now uh, within the cell tab I uh, will say run all above. So all the previous lines of code they would be run. So let me uh, click this and the previous lines would be run and you, you would see that uh, you know processing is going on you can notice the same here in python 3 here uh, and this processing is going on. So uh, let it run and then you would see the output new output would be generated uh, in this fashion you can always work with any python file any python script. So if, we, if I scroll uh, above, uh, you would start seeing some of the output there. Uh, in case uh, you know for demonstration purpose, I might have displayed uh, you know for some particular line of code, I might have discussed uh, the error and other things. So the output will stop at that point. You can see uh, the output is stopped at this point uh, one one two, and you can see we ran into an error that was part of our discussion. So now we will have to uh, you know process, uh, process from this, uh, this point again. So uh, you know uh, again I will click here and I can go here and then I can run all below. So from this point I can start running this script. Let me go back again however uh, in this fashion whenever we have these kind of lines. Uh, you know, uh, will be regenerating the output in a sense, and anytime we can clear the existing output, and we can go back and rerun those lines of code again. So let me go back to the point where we want to start our discussion in this lecture. Let me go back. So in the previous uh, lecture, we stopped at this point, fancy indexing. So this part we were able to cover. Now we will start our discussion on transposing an array. So just like in matrices uh, uh, you know uh, here uh, you know we can use a 2D array which is essentially very similar to a matrix structure 
and uh, you know some of the matrix uh, operations, some of the linear al algebra operations that are performed uh, you know using matrices, they can also be performed using 2D arrays. So, uh, let us go through some of these examples. So, first thing is uh, transposing an array just like in matrices. Uh, matrices. Uh, so, we can uh, you know transposing is essentially about swiping axes or dimensions. So, dimensions aspect we have already discussed uh, you know when we started our discussion on array. Uh, now, uh, let us take this example. So, in this uh, line 146 uh, we are you know uh, we are uh, initializing this array two dimensional array using a range and we are also using the resave function uh, which which will uh, essentially give us the uh, which where the argument that we are passing is uh, essentially giving the details about the dimensions. So, first dimension will have uh, you know three elements, second dimension will have five elements and we are using a range function to initialize those uh, elements. So, uh, let me run this and you can see array 2d4 uh, output 308 here you can see that uh, this uh, you know 3 cross 5 uh, array has been uh, produced here. So, you, you can see the structure of this 2D array or any 2D array for that matter is quite similar to what uh, we must have learned in matrices in linear uh, algebra. So, here we can perform a transpose operation. So, for this we have this capital T attribute. So, for any 2D array and array 2D4 and dot T in this fashion we would be able to transpose this array. So, essentially it is about swapping the axis. So, let me run this and you can see then it in the output 309 and you compare it with the output 308. So, output 308 was 3 cross 5 and uh, what was there uh, what are the values that are there in the first row now have become first column in output 309 and uh, the uh, uh, second row in 308 has become second column in 309. So, this is effectively uh, you know transposing a, a matrix. Here essentially uh, you know uh, when we talk about arrays uh, we, uh, we can express it like swapping axes. So, from arrays perspective uh, better uh, words would be swapping axes or dimensions. So, in that sense we can understand it from the arrays perspective as well as from the matrices perspective. Now, we also have apart from T attribute we also have a transpose uh, you know uh, method here which can be used. So, again for array 2D4 again we will uh, you know run this and you can see we will get the same output. You can see output 309 and 310 are same. Uh, so, the transpose method can be useful uh, you know in uh, useful in certain other situations as well. So, uh, for example, if we are passing the uh, axes or dimensions as arguments, uh, essentially when uh, as I said uh, the in matrix terminology uh, you know transpose has a certain different sense. When we talk about the arrays, uh, it is a slightly generalized sense that we are talking about. The generalized sense talks about the uh, you know swapping of axes. Now, transposing a you know matrix is a special kind of swapping. And when we talk about arrays, we can do many other types of swapping as well. So, those other types of swapping uh, will also in involve you know different axes which might not be in a particular order uh, you know as we do in transpose. So, uh, we will need to uh, you know uh, pass those axes uh, as arguments if we want to do any swapping. So, for that this transpose method can be really useful in those situations. So, if axes or dimension are passed as arguments, then uh, their order, order is used for per, you know permuting. So, permuting essentially we are going to perform the swapping uh, of uh, you know values along uh, those dimensions. So, uh, let us take this two values for 2D array to indicate order of axes or dimensions. Uh, so, here you can see array 2D4 dot transpose method and 0 comma 1. So, here we are uh, passing the arguments, we are telling the, the method, the axes which are to be permuted, which are to be you know swapped here. So, you can see we have indicated order 0 and 1. So, uh, you know uh, array 2D4. So, this is the order that we want to keep in the output. So, 0 and 1 is the, uh, the order of the this particular array 2D4 itself. 
So, therefore, if we run this transpose method by passing 0, 1 in the output we will get the same array. So, because uh, it is actually uh, you know the order that is has been passed for this permuting is the same as the array which we want to permute. Uh, so, let me run this and you can see output 3, 1, 1 it is a nothing but array 2D4. Now, if we want to simulate uh, what we do in a you know a matrix transpose uh, that we can do in uh, the next line uh, uh, that is uh, uh, where we are swapping second axis uh, you know the swap is about second axis would come first and the first axis second. So, if you look at the arguments that we are passing here in the transpose method uh, 1 comma 0. So, uh, the uh, you know second axis uh, now will be coming fast and the you know first axis will come later. So, per, uh, permutation uh, will happen as you know uh, you know as per this order and this is effectively the transpose that we typically do in matrix. So, if I type this array 2d4 dot transpose and 1 comma 0 uh, essentially it is similar to simulation of matrix transpose for this 2d array. So, if I run this you can see the output 3 1 2 and uh, the previous output that we had uh, obtained using the you know uh, uh, you know using the transpose method without passing in arguments and also dot t attribute capital t attribute uh, both uh, you know all three outputs are same you can see output 310 and 312 and as we have seen that output 309 and 31310 and 312 all these three outputs are same so essentially uh, in uh, in nd arrays uh, the concept of transpose uh, that we uh, are familiar with in the matrix context it has been extended right so this is about uh, you know uh, the transpose method now let's move forward now uh, we are also familiar with the inner matrix product uh, you know matrix multiplication that we typically perform now uh, that is uh, you know we we can use uh, two dimensional array uh, you know to simulate that however again here uh, in the case of uh, in the arrays context uh, even this concept can be generalized uh, so for this uh, we'll use this method np dot and this uh, particular function np dot dot function so let's take example of this uh, array array 2d5 so, here we are using this random dot random function 6 comma 3 uh, is the dimension uh, dimensions for you know this array. So, let me initialize this. So, this is the uh, 2D array that we would like to use. Now, let us look at the uh, shape attribute for this and you can see 6 comma 3. Now, if I take a transpose using the capital T attribute and then take uh, shape of that then you would see that we will get 3 comma 6. So, you can see typically when we do matrix multiplication uh, we have to check whether the matrix multiplication the inner matrix product is feasible or not. So, you can see in this in this case if I multiply the matrix with its transpose then of course, it is going to be feasible. So, 6 cross 3 the first one and the second one 3 cross 6. So, or the other way around also it is feasible. So, essentially in the next example what we are going to do is we will uh, multiply 3 cross 6 matrix and 6 cross 3 ma matrix uh, which are you know uh, transpose uh, matrix of the original matrix. So, result would be a 3 cross 3 matrix as we understand from the you know matrix algebra. So, if I call this function np dot uh, np dot uh, dot and within the parenthesis uh, I will have to pass these uh, you know um, you know these arrays as arguments. So, array 2d 5 dot t that is the transpose uh, of this and then array 2d 5 the original one and the uh, this matrix mul uh, multiplication can be performed and you can see the same in the output 316. Now, uh, for nd arrays uh, we can really extend this concept this kind of uh, you know uh, multiplication uh, concept that we have that we are familiar in the case of matrix. So, this we, this can be extended. Uh, so, let us take uh, 3 dimensional array. So, here you can see I am uh, going to create an array 3d1 and uh, we are using a range function to initialize the values uh, and uh, the, the we are using the dsafe uh, uh, here to uh, you know fix the dimension 2 comma 2 comma 4 so this is a 3d array so first dimension will have two elements the second dimension will have two elements and the 
third dimension will have uh, four element. So, uh, if you multiply these uh, 2 into 2 into 4 then uh, you would see that we require 16 values and that is why in the A range function we have passed 16 as the argument. Now this if I run this I will get a 3D array you can recognize it uh, looking at 3 brackets as well and uh, now I can create I can use the T attribute here uh, to actually. Uh, uh, you know obtain a transpose of it. So, array 3d1 dot t if I run this and you will see the output 318. So, this is the uh, you know transpo uh, transpose of this array 3d1 and uh, you know because we have used uh, uh, you know t. So, the typical the special uh, you know order that is used in a matrix transpose that is going to be used here. Uh, the same you can recognize in the output itself. Right. Uh, so, if we compare 317 and 318 here, you can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 there and uh, you can see that uh, you know uh, the shape of first thing is the shape of this transpose will reverse. So, you can see uh, in the next line array 3d1 dot t dot shape if I run this you can see 4 comma 2 comma 2. So, first thing that you should notice that the shape would be something like this the transpose output 318 you can see now uh, the first dimension will have four elements uh, and then uh, second dimension two and then third dimension two elements. So, you can see uh, uh, in the array 318 the first one 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 and then you can see that uh, you know 4, 5, 6, 7 have been you know they are in the first dimension in separate list and then you can see that uh, 8, 9, 8, uh, 9, 10, 11 which were in the separate uh, dimension there and uh, they have been clubbed with 0 uh, you can see. So, you can see how 2 cross 2 cross 4 has been converted into 4 cross 2 cross 2. So, just like in 2D it is the extension of that 2D version of transpose in 3D. So, very you know just comparing the output you would be able to uh, understand what is happening here uh, the kind of permutation that is happening. So, uh, the last axis is being permutated with the first axis in that sense this particular transpose is being performed. Now, uh, let us take a few more examples for any 3D array we would require 3 values to indicate any order of axis or dimensions uh, for this kind of uh, you know uh, this kind of uh, uh, transpose that we would like to perform on a 3D array. So, uh, let us say uh, the see for any uh, given 3D array the default order is going to be the original order is going to be uh, 0, 1, 2 that means first axis you know indicating 0 first comes first then the second axis indicated by 1 comes second and the third axis indicated by value 2 comes third as you can see in the commented uh, section original. Now, the desired uh, is the one where we would like to make certain you know per, you know uh, changes. Uh, so, you can see the desired is uh, 1 that means second axis is coming first then 0, the first axis is coming second and the third axis uh, you know it is in, in its uh, position no change there. So, the swap that we want to perform is that second axis first then first, first axis second and the last axis unchanged. So, for this we will have to type like this array 3d1 dot transpose and whatever is the desired order that we want to perform we can indicate it like this in a tuple. So, you can see if I run this you can see the output has been accordingly produced here and you can compare it with the original one and you can see how the changes have happened. Now, uh, in the transpose method uh, tip, you would see that if you do not pass the argument the default order would be you know executed or if you specify then that particular order is used uh, for swapping the axis all the axis at once. Now, uh, sometimes you might want to just uh, you know swap a pair of axis and not go with the all uh, the axis and uh, uh, you, you can still uh, swap a pair of axis using transpose method, but that would require you know uh, you know indicating you know uh, manipulating the transpose method in a particular way. However, it can be done easily using another method that is swap axis method. So, here essentially we would be switching any two axes or dimensions of an uh, ND array. For an example, let us take this array 3D1 and we will switch second and third axes, second and third dimension. So, this is array 3D1, 
and uh, shape of this array 3D1 is this 2, uh, 2, 4. Now we can use swap axis method here and in the arguments you can see I am indicating the two axes that uh, you know I would like to switch 1 and 2, 1 indicating you know, uh, you know second and uh, dimension and 2 indicating third dimension. So essentially we would like to switch here. So if I run this you can see the output and you can compare the output number 3 to 1 and uh, 3 to 3 and you can see how the switching has happened here. Now, if, we, if you want to check this, you know, shape of, uh, you know, this, the output, again, uh, we can use the shape attribute and you can see uh, the original one was uh, 2 comma 2 comma 4. Now, the, you know, after the switching, it is 2 comma 4 comma 2. So, you can see the clear switching has happened. So, looking at the number of elements in the, you know, after switching and how they change, we can also understand you know which axes or dimensions have been switched or swapped. Now uh, let us focus on another aspect of uh, array, uh, ND arrays uh, that is element wise operations. So remember that uh, when we talked, when we started our discussion on NumPy, we focused on the aspect that uh, you know uh, we can get rid of the those loop construct which are typically you know used to uh, do certain kind of processing and ele element wise uh, you know operations are facilitated uh, you know in the using uh, ND arrays. So, we will focus on some of those aspects here. So, let us take this array 9 and uh, initialize this using a arrange function. Uh, you can see the output 3 to 5 and these are the 10 values. Now, if you want to take a square root of each number here. So, this we can also achieve uh, using the you know python basics uh, you know, built in capabilities and we can run a loop and uh, perform this process for each of the element. However, uh, because uh, we are using this data structure this arrays and that can actually be used to perform this in one go and rather you know faster and uh, better uh, with better memory utilization. So, for this we will have to use this uh, np.sqrt a function here and we will pass on this array 9. So, np.sqrt array 9 and I run this. So, we will get an array as an output and each of the element of the you know array 9 uh, and uh, that square root has been produced and generated in the form of an output array as you can see in the output number 3226. So, in this fashion just one line of code and we have achieved what we would have otherwise done using loops. Let us take another uh, one more example uh, uh, exponential of uh, each number. So, let us uh, you know if we have a sequence of values and we will like to take exponential for each number again uh, arrays and these numpy uh, functions could be really useful. So, np.exp to compute the exponential for this array 9 and each of uh, the elements that are part of this array 9. So, if I run this again and in the output you can see that exponential of each of the you know element has been taken and produced in the output. Now, uh, let us uh, take uh, let us initialize another array uh, np dot random we are using np dot random dot random. As you might have seen I have, I have been using few uh, functions without uh, much discussion on them because later on in the coming lectures we would be focusing uh, more on those aspects of those kind of functions in more detail. So, right now I am using this uh, to gen initialize this array. If I run this, I will get array 10 like this. And uh, let me take another array 11 in a similar fashion using this function, random function, random function. And now uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, find the maximum of two numbers. Uh, you know, so we would like to do so essentially when we started this part of the discussion, we said element wise operations. Now, given these two arrays, array 10 and array 11, we would like to compare, you know, first element in array 10 with the first element in the array 11. Similarly, second element in the array 10 and second element in the array 11. So, essentially an element wise operations where we are comparing these two, uh, you know, sequences and each of the elements in these two sequences, that can be done in one go. So, uh, we can have something like this um, np dot so maximum of two numbers we can run this np dot maximum function and we can pass on these two arrays array 10 and array 11 and if I run this and you can see the output. Uh, so, there 
you would see if you compare this uh, with the output 328 and 329 and output 330 you can see in the output 330 whichever is uh, the higher among 328 and 329 that has been produced that, uh, that is part of output 330 as you can clearly see from here. Now let us move to the next part. Now uh, uh, we might have an array which might be having uh, you know floating uh, point numbers. So, if we want to segregate the uh, you know fractional part and integral part that can also be performed here. So, that would also be quite similar to element wise operations that we typically do. So, let us take this function np dot mod f and we pass on this argument array 10 and uh, in, the, in the left hand side you can see we are segregating the fractional part will, will be stored in decimal. Uh, object and the uh, the integral part will be stored in the whole object. So, you can see decimal comma whole and then equal to np dot mod f and array 10. So, if I run this uh, now you can see let us access the uh, decimal part and you can see the decimal part uh, we have got here and similarly the whole part and you can see in the output 333 the whole part has been segregated. So, in this fashion this is another example of element wise operations using arrays where easily we have been able to do this. Uh, you know if we do not use the numpy and these uh, you know nd arrays then this would have to be performed using loops and slightly more lines of code. So, you can see it is uh, you know more easier to work with data uh, using these uh, you know python modules python packages. Now, we will talk about an out argument to facilitate in place like output. So, uh, uh, sometimes we would like to uh, you know in certain scenarios we would like to have this kind of functionality. So, before we start let us take this uh, you know example np dot sqrt array 9 and this would be the output. Now, uh, uh, you know let me initialize another array array 12 with uh, using the empty function and we are going to use the shape of array 9 because uh, we would like to uh, use later on this as an you know. Uh, another uh, array similar to array 9 to record the output. So, let me initialize this define this and now you can see in the we are again using np dot sqrt function. So, the um, line number 334 we directly got the output. Uh, now, we could have recorded this output in another array. So, that is one approach. Uh, now, the second thing is that uh, we can use the np dot sqrt function itself where we have an out uh, you know argument where we can indicate the array where we would like to you know uh, you know record store this output output of np dot sqrt. So, in that sense it is quite similar to what we do when we use methods and we get in place output uh, that means the original uh, you know object is modified to produce the output. So, similar kind of thing uh, with a different mechanism. So, now we are going to call np dot sqrt array 9 comma array 12 where array 12 which we have just defined uh, that is going to be used to store the output of np dot uh, np dot sqrt array 9. So, if I run this I will get this output and you can check array 12. Let me go back and you can uh, you know compare the output number 337 with output number uh, 334 and you can see it is the same output. Uh, here in the same function we have you know uh, again used uh, another uh, we have defined another object to record the output quite similar to in place thing. Now, uh, the, the next aspect is about uh, uh, the uh, another another feature of arrays and the arrays which is vectorization. So, uh, now we will talk about the vectorized uh, vectorized array operations. So, for this uh, we will talk about uh, slightly uh, slightly more uh, you know complex uh, mathematical operations and how the nd arrays uh, you know this data structure that we have in numpy uh, it can allow this element wise operation thing and vectorization and faster processing and uh, faster execution and better memory utilization for these kind of operations. So, we will stop at this point and we will discuss the these vectorized array operation in the next lecture. Thank you.